Looking back at the weird and bizarre horror movies of 2002, this is Nerdist Now. The year is 2002. You just got a new iPod with 20 gigs of storage. Yu-Gi-Oh! is on the TV, and Vanessa Carlton could get away with any felony. It was a weird time in America, and no genre of film reflects culture like horror movies. When most people think about influential eras of horror, they usually point to the rise of the modern-day slasher in the 70s, or the absurdity and decadence of the 1980s. But in 2002, horror gave us some true movie gems that were entertaining and unforgettable in multiple ways. Are these films part of a defining decade? That's debatable. Were all of them even good? Definitely not. But these are absolutely worth a watch, especially if you want to drastically shift the mood of your Halloween party this year. We're going to be highlighting six movies, but if you want a more in-depth list, Ty Gooden has you covered over on Nerdist.com. Dark Water. Japan has been in the spooky wet ghost game for a long time, and 2002 was a big year for the pale ghost girl with bendy bones. Juwan the Grudge was released, along with the American remake of The Ring, which would spawn a glut of American remakes of Japanese horror. But we're not talking about either of those. We're talking about Dark Water. Directed by Hideo Nakata, who also directed the OG Ring, it shows us there are very few things creepier than a ghost kid and an apartment building that is perpetually leaking. And it's even worse when you're a mom who already has enough on her plate before realizing that something ghost-related is going down in your new apartment. Yoshimi Inakuko's haunting journey of trying to survive is equal parts harrowing, deeply emotional, and for sure not for people who hate hair in their water. Which I'm guessing is everybody. Except you. I see you, you weirdo like your hairy water. Bubba Hotep. If you're on this YouTube channel, there's a very good chance you know who Bruce Campbell is. But if the Pizza Papa was your first exposure to the most chinned man in America, we highly recommend that cinematic delight that is Bubba Hotep. Written and directed by Phantasm's Don Coscarelli, Bubba Hotep tells the very true story of Elvis Presley, who got tired of all the fame and switched lives with an Elvis impersonator, who then died on the toilet, leaving the real Elvis trapped in his simple new life. After an explosion and a coma, Elvis wakes up in a nursing home with not John F. Kennedy, played by Aussie Davis. What good casting. And of course there's a killer mummy dressed as a cowboy causing all kinds of trouble, like they do. If this movie is your jam, then let us recommend Phantasm, another incredibly, incredibly strange film. I don't think it has a plot, but if it did, oh boy, I don't know it. <laughs> Signs. Like we said earlier, horror is the genre of film that holds a lens up to society, and in 2002, fear of outsiders and paranoia was pervasive throughout post-2001 horror. And it's on full display in M. Night Shyamalan's Signs. A former pastor still struggling with the random death of his wife and trying to raise his two children ends up coming across crop circles on his farm, which of course means Draculas. Aliens, sorry, it's aliens, it's not Draculas. People love to try and dunk on Shyamalan, but the tension in signs is absolutely pitch perfect. And the setting of an entire planet glued to their televisions during a time of crisis creates an incredibly prescient backdrop for the time. And it has one of the best jump scares out there. You know the one. Oh! 28 days later. Speaking of the feeling of overwhelming dread and angry mobs, we can't talk about 2002 without talking about the terrifying 28 Days Later. The titular 28 Days refers to the time that passes after a group of activists release chimps infected with rage virus onto the world. Those two words on their own are never good, and together they're just an ocean of red flags. Our protagonist Jim, played by Killian Murphy, wakes up from a coma to find England in its apocalypse era, and must fight to survive hordes of infected and the most dangerous monster of all, man. Seriously though, if you've never seen 28 Days Later or you haven't watched it in a while, do yourself a favor and watch it immediately. Like, stop this video and go watch. It's brutal, thrilling, chilling, and easily the best movie ever shot on DV tape. The bar is not high. One Hour Photo. The words Robin Williams and horror seem like polar opposites. Hello! <laughs> but the beloved comedian showed fans that he could be downright frightening in this psychological thriller from director Mark Romanek. It's very much a film of its time, mainly because there's not too much photo development anymore. But this wild story about a photo developer who gets a little too involved in a customer's life will make your skin crawl. Just when you think this film can't get any more twisted, it goes another level deeper. And also might have one of the best line deliveries in any movie. Neon Genesis Evangelion. <whistles> wow. Blade 2, Cruise Control. The 1998 movie Blade was an unexpected box office success, especially for an early comic book movie about a mostly unknown character. Come on, don't pretend you knew who Blade was in 1996. 
So when the sequel came around in 2002, it took all the action from the first movie, doubled it, and added goth Donnie Yen, even grotier vampires, and the universally beloved Guillermo del Toro behind the camera. It's really everything you want from a sequel. Snipes is snipier, there's at least 50% more swords, blood, and nightclubs, and it doesn't seem like we're getting a new Blade movie next year, so this one will have to tide you over. Or you can be really brave and sit through Blade Trinity and stare into Wesley Snipes' CG eyes. And there you go. Six unsettling horror movies that will transport you back to when your Nokia phone could survive a seven car pileup. But tell us, what did you think of this list? What's your favorite movie from 2002? It's probably Spider-Man. Are you upset we didn't put dog soldiers on this list either? I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. And what's your favorite thing about Blade? Is it the Blades? Let us know in the comments below and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.Draculas.com. I did it again, I'm sorry.